everybody. Happy New Week. I hope you're doing amazing. I have got one of my recently published authors from across the ditch, as they say, from New Zealand, uh, Pam Milaj. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Nat. Thank you for having me um, today. I'm so happy to have you today and so curious about what we're going to talk about, about your book, Astral, which you guys can see there in Pam's background behind her. But um, before we get stuck into um, our conversation about what you have written, I want to really cover um, cover off your introduction properly as to who you are, because you and I met just before COVID at a conference on the Gold Coast and uh, we've known each other now. Oh, can you believe it's coming up to five years um, since that day? So I'm going to share, guys, a little bit close up of uh, Pam's book and we're going to go through as to who she is and what we're going to talk about today. All right, so for decades, Pam Milaj has dedicated herself to exploring and applying the fundamental principles of soul evolution, integrating the science of the mind with divinely inspired hypnosis, soul psychology, and energy transmutation. She ventures into the unseen realms of human existence from birth to death and beyond. Pam upholds the ageless wisdom of past masters. Our soul acts as a bridge between our conscious mind and the higher dimensions which embody our innate magnificent connection to pure consciousness. With 90% of human behavior originating from the unconscious mind, which is rational and therefore easily malleable, uh, consciously employing your ideal spiritual blueprint allows you to command your unconscious mind to give you what you want. Pam's mission with Astral is clear, to empower readers to navigate our chaotic world with wisdom and to thrive there, thrive there by positively impacting not only themselves but also the well-being of our planet. Wow, amazing. If you're not curious by now... <laughs> You should be curious um, about what Pam's going to share this morning. So maybe take us back, Pam. How did this all start and um, this work that you're doing and obviously the desire to put it into book format? It's been there all my life, actually. I can go right back to when I was a child, um, very empathetic with people that were ill. And mm. I used to ask my God, even then, to give it to me because I was young and strong. And then I realised later on when I looked back that I would be seeing some coughing old man that had given himself all sorts of disease and been addicted to alcohol and all sorts of things like that. And I recognise that we all have a journey. We all have to go through our crosses and learn our lessons because that's what the evolution of the soul is. That's why we're here on Earth. Mm, wow I love it and so um this has been all your life where did the niggling feeling about I need to put this in a book format come from that niggling feeling um I can't pinpoint because it's been in my mind for so long and as a very insular type of person um I always felt not good enough to nobody wants mm. to listen to me and that that has a story behind it as well so I mm. used to, my, my mouth would just shake when I tried to speak, even when I was in the corporate world, if I was in a meeting. So it has been there, sitting there. And I don't know about you, Nat, but do you, have you had the experience of getting signs to do something and ignoring them? I've had those signs and they got to be the Big Mac truck that bowls you right over several times and the message came through. Pam, you need to write what you studied for the, your lifetime and it has been a lifetime. So yeah. that's why I persevered in writing this book. It's like a, a primer that every human beings should have in their education. And so what is some of the stuff that a lot of people are not aware of that maybe you share within this book? A lot of people are not aware of the influences that are there to uh, influence their unconscious mind 
I mean, 90 percent of people's minds unconscious. You've got, you know, you're consciously going around doing what you do every day. And there are so many influences that influence that mind, which is, and it goes back for generations. Um, it's the mind that has no logic, the unconscious mm. mind. And it cannot say, oh, that won't be good for you, Pam, or that won't be good for you, Nat. You better change mm. that. It will give you what you focus on. So if you're focusing on all of the chaos in the world, you're going to be creating, adding to it. If you're worried about your kids, for instance, you're going to be adding to that. It's like I see it as a, a grey energy. That's instead of nurturing yourself and your kids, you're giving yes. them that that energy that is not helping at all. It's like mm. you know, that um, tough love thing. It's tough to see your kids suffering. The only way you can help them is by channeling some of that absolute mother love, which is unconditional, isn't it? Yeah. So is the the key to all of this is for us to, I guess, master that feeling of uh, feeling good and focusing on the good things in our life so that we can attract more of that? Yes. Well, there are certain spiritual laws that apply. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you'd probably wonder why I called the book Astral. Is that? Yes, please. I don't know whether you're going to ask that question. But if yeah, you... I'm, I'm open to wherever this conversation takes us because I'm so curious about this stuff. I've read a million and one self development, spiritually guided books, and yours is obviously one of them. So, yes, please share why did you call it Astral? Have you ever been to London in a pea super? Or have you, do you know what I mean by a fog? Astral is like a quagmire. You know, a, a, you know when you go into um, wet sand or something, astral mm -hmm. is like a quagmire of people's negative emotions. So we've got emotions that are based on our virtues, our values, which are always higher. So they're what we call them spiritual because they're the highest of your um, life when you enjoy and and harmony with mm. with everybody around you but you look out there and you see a chaotic world and a lot of people are getting angry these days there's so much anger being displayed in all sorts of areas our systems are broken and when I, why I called it astral is because astral really is a delusion it is about the negative ego of humanity and most of humanity don't address it a lot of people yeah. do, but a lot of the people that I get in this clinic, I've had to spend so much time educating them on how their brain works, how their mind works, mm -hmm. where their thoughts go, and how they affect their own emotions, and how those emotions uh, correlate to the astral plane, which is a great fog of rubbish. <laughs> I was going to say crap. But rubbish that gets in the way of their ideal self because the influences today, there's so much information yes. being given out there. And a lot of them, a lot of that information is flawed because everybody comes from their subjective truth, what they think they know. Oh, you you've yeah. even said it yourself, what you you don't know what you don't know until you know. And when you do know, you know you don't know yeah. more. So it's <laughs> um about that subjective yeah. truth of everybody's and recognizing and respecting everybody, but realizing that we're all on a journey of the soul. While I've why I've called it invisible is that you can't put a pin on your thoughts. You can't say, yeah, um, I feel good today, but what's good? I feel happy. What's happy? It's a subjective truth. So mm -hmm. you can't see your thoughts, but they are. Edgar Casey said, Thoughts are things. So yes. when you think, you you need to be really aware of what you're thinking about because you're either creating havoc inside of you in your own energy system and you're also creating havoc in the great astral plane that is mass consciousness. That is what I see as getting in the way of our beautiful planet because mm. we... We have been given guardianship of that and we're not doing it properly. So astral 
has been come from my heart, come from my higher mind to, you know, reiterate what past masters have said and they haven't yes. been heard. Why I've done it the way I've done it is that it's easy to read, it's easy yeah. to understand, and a lot of the lot of the other books that I've read have been so so uncannily difficult to understand that I've had to read them backwards and forwards. So yeah, yeah. that was it's a cipher. <laughs> So when you think, um, when you talk about this, um, we need to become aware of our thinking and what it creates within us and in the mass consciousness. How is there some practical tools you can share in terms of how we can become more aware of it? Absolutely. I mean, there's self-hypnosis tools in there, but the self-hypnosis needs to be, you know, you recognise what you don't want in your life. You need to look at the opposite because there's a part in your mind called the reticular activating system. Yeah. <laughs> and that will, that will give you exactly what you focus on. It does filter out some things, but it depends on how much you uh, um, know about your values. A lot of my clients don't know their values and mm. they have to be explained what is a value. Values turn into yes. virtues. you like, I've got this virtue about enhancing every space I enter doesn't matter why or what it's just you know clean it up or give somebody a smile or you lift people yeah. up because there's so much going on out there so yeah, yeah there's those practical tools and the ways to use them and there's another one do you want me to carry on do you want me to ask you do you want yeah. to ask me another question? no, I, no I, I i love hearing this i always want to walk away from an interview having gained a couple of hot tips for my own life and how I behave and hopefully everyone who is listening here with us today is like can pick that up you know we you know it's just like it's one thing for us to describe theory right but you know this is what you can do and values is something that I talk about a lot as well when people haven't made the writing the book in it pushed it up in your top three values consciously right it's not going to happen otherwise otherwise you're wondering why haven't I written it well it's because it's living right on the bottom of your list right so yeah please share another one yeah okay so one of the biggest things was I um you know very many triggers um was people didn't seem to know where their thoughts go and what mm -hmm. their thoughts do go? when they they thought, I mean, people's thoughts travel forever into infinity because, and also there's no new ideas. I mean, we're coming up and we're talking about this and we're talking about that, but there's no new ideas in the all that exists. It's just in the way that they're expressed. They need to be expressed from yeah. the highest virtues or the highest mm -hmm. spiritual aspect of yourself. And that has to be integrated because there's many, many, many people who think that they're just their human body. And the human body, um, I guess it's the spiritual aspect is the highest thoughts of your spiritual thoughts, you know. You, you, you know what I mean. If you're a mother, you know what I mean, because that unconditional love you have for your children just doesn't go away no matter what they do. And I know yeah. what, I, what I'm talking about there because... I've had some times with one of my children and I absolutely adore him still. Mm. But he gave me the opportunity to delve deeply into mm. why people why people have to find um, other ways and means of helping them through trauma. Because they most people are very sensitive and they just don't know how to cope. So astral is yes. about how to cope. How to cope when you come across trauma. Your soul being the the intermediary between your physical earthly life and your spiritual mm. self, those ideals. And it's going to find for you opportunities all the way along. It's like going through one of those video games where you come up against a lot of stuff and you have to cope with it. But it's 
going to give you the opportunities to learn lessons that you haven't learned, to also make changes in your lineage, you know, because things that come through sometimes are within your genetic makeup and the lineage yeah. of your parents and they yeah. stick around. So the opportunity is to look at that and to say, okay, I'm no longer going to have that in my family. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change the pattern that goes on in that area. For instance, it is possible not to have, um, well, I shouldn't say that now. I was going to say about medication and things like that because I don't, but you've got to get there a long way before you can you can be uh, free of, of, you know, illness and stuff like that as I was saying the book astral is a a guide to start mm. and I was going to say when I first started this little paragraph of conversation that I found that through my own experiences while you're on the journey before you get into your light space your because you've got lots of different light bodies you need to protect your energy system especially mm -hmm. if you're working with people that are emotional, as my colleagues, hypnotherapists do. We're working yeah. with people that are emotional and trauma, and we need to protect our own energy system and keep them protected as well. And there are ways in the book to protect your own energy Give us system. one way. Give us one way. One way is to connect with your highest self, which you, you know, you can you can call forth your highest self, which is that which is your love. I, I always look at something like a mother's love for their children, but there's also that beautiful feeling when you go into nature and you see magnificent mountains and your heart fills with love. If you can somehow connect with that love, and then mm. use. Use your imagination to spin. I call it God's golden egg because God, the acronym I have for God is grace over drama. So we're going up to that space of grace, whatever way you find it. And some people find it with their dogs and their pets, but it fills your heart and you can expand that around you in a golden egg that will protect you from the energy of other people and from the influence of those other people that don't have any conscience and they just want to exploit you. So there's lots of yeah. lots of areas where you need to be on guard and develop your um oh I've lost the word so it mustn't be ready to come yet. Uh -huh. Um your it's gone so it's not that's all, all right. right. I, I I got the vision of it all. I've got the you know the the golden egg and like connecting to love and or something beautiful that like yeah so it's kind of just like um almost a, a form of meditation that you would do that you can you know connect to that um place and yeah I completely agree with you you know um when you are around a lot of people various you know um energies and traumas and all that kind of stuff that may have gone on you can you know you can you you can feel it impacting you if you have not done some work to to be able to put a boundary, um, you know, of what exactly. enters your... Exactly. Yeah. The, the word I was trying to get was detached yeah. involvement. You need to be able detached. to detach yeah. yourself. Yeah. Detach yes. yourself from the involvement of... You can see the news and, and all of that. But don't take it on board because there's so much chaos out there and so many conspiracy theories that it's mm -hmm. really, really important to keep yourself in that that grace over drama space all the time. Also yes. within the book, you, you see those um, ancient natural laws that um, are dominant and how you can um, use them for your own emotional you can use them for your emotional um, transmutation, if you like. There's mm. lots and lots of different um, pointers yeah. there. So yeah. if someone's um, uh, suffering from an illness or disease, because we've often heard the fact that this is, is you know, some kind of underlying traumatic emotional manifestation in the body, right? Where would they 
start with this kind of work or you know would you know some of the strategies in your book help like center them and connect to their higher self and all that there are a lot of strategies in the book that help and it's sad that people have got into dis disease disease metaphysical it is and um louise hay brought that out to most people in her her book um you can heal your life or you can heal your body and it yeah. uh, that used to be my bible because it has affirmations to to say yeah. now the disease is not 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 always something that has developed over this lifetime because it can be as I said before within the genetic makeup and we could we can call it the sins of the fathers in a lot of ways because we have generations of um, skewed thinking people have been hypnotized if you like in the wrong way because yeah. we've learned we've learned um, some very skewed beliefs that have embedded themselves in us and yes you have a disease you can use affirmations you can um, you can get hypnotherapists that will take you to that place where you certainly want to first yeah yeah where you first um, manifested it because it's usually come from a an emotion you know, I'm not saying that's always comes from an emotion, but it usually has originated from some sort of emotion or stress related emotion. And you can look yes. at those books that like Bruce Lipton, who's done his epigenetics and his biology of belief book, is really amazing because it sort of correlates to Dr. Emoto's book, which everybody's every book every atom has got the same proton in it and mm. it it's the electrons around them the buzzing around the proton that creates the the what sort of atom it is so you're looking at cells and you can go from the macrocosm which is the tiny tiny little cells that we are to them the make the microcosm to the macrocosm which is the larger ones and yes. you can realize that everything needs a great environment to live in, a perfect yes. ideal environment. So everything that has form has a, a, an etheric blueprint. And that etheric mm. blueprint gets muddied by our emotions, by our negative ego, by our need to be right, by our need to be have power over. Yes. I can talk about all this stuff. Um, because I can go off onto lots of different tangents when I'm talking. Yes. Yeah. So yes, there are there are beautiful ways to get yourself well, and it's all based on love, taking your own power back, recognizing that you have made up your mind about some things that give you stress. And you can look at mm -hmm. post traumatic stress, which is a terrible, terrible thing for people to have to cope with with and yes. most of the time they take a lot of heavy medications which blocks the energy system so yes. yeah therapists that are trained in that sort of thing are, are a boon to help unfortunately yes. our medical profession doesn't really look at hypnotherapy in the way that it could do um we have to look yes. at i mean you can look at um, traditional psychology for instance is it's based on observation when mm. i put invisible journey on my mm. little tagline of astral i'm talking about the invisible nature of things that is more on that spiritual level more on how we have to cope through things more on how we have yeah. to um recognize those invisible things as as absolute um tangibles that yeah. we need to cope with and integrating those, there's so much that we need to harmonize at every level of our being. There's so much to know. <laughs> that we only, but this is why I believe books like yours um, kind of condense all these years of, of, as you said, you've had this in your life since you were a child, and putting it in a book gives some of us a little bit of a fast track and a shortcut to not have to figure it all out over the time that it does take so 
Um, talk to me a bit about um, how is the process of writing your book? I mean, we know that you didn't complete it quite in the three or four months that it would normally take. Uh, it took probably about 18 months, but it's here. It's a slightly bigger book than our normal standard size book. Um, tell me about the process and how did you stay disciplined to follow through? Well, I, it's just me. I, I love research and I have got, I did follow through. I did do twice as much as, I did write twice yeah. as much as that and yeah. recognise that I had to hone it down. But the thing is, I've got another book in me and I recognise why I had to go through that. It was terrible trying to hone it all down because I yes. wanted to give everything. But there is a good thing in that that is a reference book for anybody, including yeah. my colleagues, uh, hypnotherapy colleagues and spiritual hypnotherapy colleagues. It's also for coaches and teachers because they can then understand how the mind works and mm -hmm. why why I talk about karma and why I talk about anyway I'm dig I'm digressing there. The whole process was really like at the beginning I found it hard because I didn't yeah. know what to put down first and I was mm -hmm. trying to keep to a, a, a you know a way of doing it. But yeah. Then when I got halfway through, it just all vomited out. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't intend to put the little rhymes in there. There was no there was no thought of that. But as I sat to write and I got into my best space, they just mm -hmm. all came through. And I thought, oh gosh, I sound like Dr. Zeus or something. But <laughs> I found it really good because it was an easier way to get the the idea and the point down. And then I could mm -hmm. do a little bit of science, science behind it or an, an experience that I'd had. There are many, many experiences I haven't put in that book because I do not want to um, instill fear or anything like that. I just want people to know that it's really important to to recognize the company they keep can be a great influence. And the company okay. they keep is about social media and the influences of social media. It's about our news, um, um, you know, what we've been fed and how it's been said to us because mm. some of it is instilling fear. It's saying what to expect. We mm. are the ones that create our life. And if we do not say, I don't want to hear that, this is going to be in my life, I will add value. I will not add the grayness of to those media forecasts that are crappy, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> that is I love Sorry? I've heard one person, one of my um authors as well say that your your world or your life or your business is a 3d printout of your thoughts um which I, I really love that kind of little quote there and that's what I'm hearing from you as well it's you're going to manifest in front of you what you most have going on within you yeah and the the, the mm. thing is like you know what a seesaw is yes or, or teeter-totter could you remember yes. when, when I was a kid, I used to get on the seesaw and then I'd stand on the pivot point and try and balance it? Well, life is yes. about always making that balance. Even when you walk, you go off balance. So you're always yes. balancing. And um, in that respect, it's about all of the all of the things you come across in life mm -hmm. and yeah. recognising that you need to be aware of what's going on, but keep yourself in that space because if you're your light space you're creating the consciousness the, you're creating a a light in the darkness and that light wow. in the darkness is going to uh, also be absorbed by people and yeah I love that yeah it's like when we notice um you know when you're at a party and there's someone there with high energy and you know the vibe is like really really nice or you've got the energy vampires as we like to say who really can 
make us feel down and you feel well, you walk away exhausted from a particular person. So that's awesome. Well, guys, go and get Pam's book. But one of the best news we have for you guys today, if you're listening to this live or within these next 24, 48 hours that it's going out live. I know this is going to be out there in the a digital world for a while, uh, but tomorrow Pam's book is launching on Amazon internationally. So you can get the ebook version of this book for just 99 cents, which is super, super exciting. Um, otherwise, if you want an actual physical copy so you can draw all over and highlight, which is what I love to do, um, I'm just actually, this is the book. So let's show it up on the screen again one more time. Um, Ashton discovered the greatest human delusion of all time. Um, so here we go. Sorry, just that took just a moment to get up on Facebook. What I'm just going to share one more time is uh, Pam's website. So where you can physically go and get the book is, I love your simple uh, website um, URL, Pam. It's Pam with double M. Uh, dot nz you guys p a w m dot nz and you can see it on the screen now you can buy a physical copy from here pam will get it out to you it is also available to on all your good online reseller stores um like the amazons barnes and noble and all that sort of stuff um that you can go but remember tomorrow the ebook for just 24 hours will be at 99 cents uh so if you're curious i'm definitely super 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 curious about everything that pam talks about because I love that stuff I love the unseen that can actually change your life and manifest than the scene <laughs> you see in your life and um and also to, to help us you know every time from having read so many books Pam, and listening to you know I mean I, I've listened a lot to Esther Hicks and you know how she talks about getting into the vortex you know you know there's the good vortex but then there's the bad vortex right um yes. you know and how do we how do we get ourselves out you know how do we shift that because it's ne we're never always going to be positive in life you know it, it is the seesaw like how do we rebalance so if we can have the tools which I believe your book holds a lot of the answers of how to rebalance and stay you know on that seesaw you know on the positives aside rather than the negative um thank you so much um for joining me today and sharing your wisdom and i hope everyone in society and the world um you know will get a lot of value from from this keep sharing your message i know you're a, you say that you're an introvert and you don't like to be in front of people but i think by being i think you're also um shifting the the positivity and in, in um adding value to mass consciousness in a gr good way which needs to spread like a virus right <laughs> Exactly, it's a bit of virus than yeah. what we've had. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And I appreciate you appreciate your time today, and everybody, go and um, check this book out. There's been a few people watching. Um, Gian said, "Such a great book. I need the uh, need to read this." So there you go. This so you can get it either directly. Thank you for writing your book, Pam. She's saying, and a few people are uh, watching as well. But some of you will be watching this on a recording. So connect with Pam. If you um uh if you're curious, you want some assistance from her and um and yeah, let's let's share this far and wide uh and change our mass consciousness. All right, guys, have an amazing week ahead and go out there and smash it out. Bye.